Hello, this is our first lesson on our unit on inequalities and systems. The first few lessons are going to be on inequalities. Okay, inequalities are of course anything with these Pac-Man's Pac-Man guys in them, right? They're not equal, they're either greater than or less than. Okay. So same as usual, our definition of solve stands. So we need to find all values of x that make that guy true. The way we go about it is very similar to if there's an equal sign. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. Oops, no I'm not. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides to get the x by itself. So I get 2x is less than negative 8. Divide by 2. x, or sorry, is greater than negative 8. So x is greater than negative 4. So on a number line, we'd have 0 there. Number four, negative 4 would be over here. We're going to put an open circle on negative 4 to show that it's just a boundary because it's not going to make this true. x is only greater than negative 4. So we have a boundary at negative 4, and then everything greater than that will make that true. So for example, if I were to throw in 0, I get 2 times 0 plus 5 is greater than negative 3. I end up with 5 is greater than negative 3, which is true. And that's going to be true for all these infinite values, infinite number of values that are greater than negative 4. And now a little review from unit 3. Um, I'm going to subtract 18 from both sides here to get everything on the same side. So I get x squared plus 3x minus 18 equals 0. And I can factor that to x plus 6 x minus 3 equals 0. So x is going to equal negative 6 or positive 3. Give those a check. That guy's true. And we got 36 minus 18 is also true. Okay, and some more chapter 3 review here. So in this case, we're going to need two numbers that add to 14 and multiply to negative 15. Remember, the negative 15 comes from 3 times negative 5. If you don't remember how to factor, you should go back and have a look at lesson 3.1. And that will show you how to factor again. Okay, so those two numbers are going to be negative 1 and positive 15. And now we need to factor by grouping. The only thing we can take out of here is an x. Take a 5 out of that. So they both have a common factor of 3x minus 1, and we're left with x plus 5. So either 3x minus 1 has to equal 0, so x equals a third, or x plus 5 equals 0, and we can easily see that x equals negative 5. We'll make that true. Okay, let's do our checks. Seventy minus seventy minus five is true. Three times a third is one, so that gets rid of one of those thirds, which means we're left with one of them left. And common denominator of three leaves us with 15 over three. So a third plus 14 thirds is 15 thirds, minus 15 thirds is zero. Okay, and now we need to know some stuff from chapter four. So I'm gonna do a table of values here. 
And in the middle of my table of values, I'm going to put 3, 4, because that's my vertex. I know that because the vertex happens at 0 squared. And x equals 3 is going to give me 0 squared. There's my other values. So there is my solution to y equals negative x plus 4. Okay, so for what values of x is y equal to 0? Well, when y equals 0, it's going to be there and there. So x is going to equal 1 and 5 when y equals 0. Notice that when y equals 0, our equation turns into this. So there's our solutions. x equals 1 and 5. Okay, 4 asks us for the values of x where y is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, well we know it's equal to 0 at 1 and 5. And then where is y greater than 0? Well, all the way through here. So basically, on our number line, they've asked us for it's going to be between 1 and 5, and including 1 and 5. So we'll have solid dots to show that we're including 1 and 5. Okay. Easy way to change this into symbols is the x's we're interested in are here in the middle where we filled this part in. Got one on that side, five on that side. And if we've done our number line properly, numbers are always getting bigger as we go to the right, which means that our Pac-Man is always going to eat the number to the right if we've written our numbers down here in the same order. And then we've included these two points by putting in solid dots, which means that it will also equal one and five. So that is the answer to number four. Okay, number five asked us, what does it mean to solve that? Same as usual, we're finding all values of x that are going to make that thing true. Well, on the graph, basically this is the same as saying when is y greater than or equal to zero. Because on the graph, the values for y and the values for this are the same. So the solution to this guy is going to be 1 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 5. Okay, and let's check a point from our solution. Let's say, I don't know, 2. And let's make sure that that makes our inequality true. So negative 2 minus 3 squared plus 4 greater than or equal to 0. So we get negative 1 plus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. 3 is greater than or equal to 0 is true. And that's going to be true for all the infinite points in between and including 1 to 5. They will all make this inequality here true. OK, so if we're only using the graph of a quadratic function to solve an inequality, what are the only two things that are important? Well, on the last example, first thing we needed to know was the 1 and the 5, because they were intercepts. And then we had to know that it was greater than up here. So we need to know the x-intercepts, and we need to know if it's opening up or down. If we know that, then we know where our graph is going to be above the x-axis. OK, so let's first figure out our x-intercepts. And of course, we can always already see that this graph will be opening down. So now we just need the x-intercepts. So when this equals 0, that'll give us our x-intercepts. So when x minus 3 equals 0, that'll give us x equals 3. And 2x minus 1 equals 0. We need to add 1 to both sides. Oops, over 2. 
x equals a half. So we're going to end up with an x-intercept here at a half, and we're going to end up with an x-intercept at three, and we're going to be opening down. And that's as accurate a graph as we need. We just need to know it's opening down. And now we're looking for when our expression is less than zero. So it's not going to include a half, but it will include the stuff down here. And it's not going to include three because it equals zero at three. And it's going to include that stuff down there. So on a number line, have a half there, have three there. So it's going to not include a half, but it will be the boundary. And then down from there, not include three, but bigger than three. And we can still use that same method to turn this into symbols. So our x goes here, where our x's are showing up here. Half is the boundary. Number is getting bigger that way. Three here. X's are over here. Numbers are getting bigger that way. So x has to be less than a half. It's not a very clear half. X has to be less than a half or greater than three. Okay, and it asks us to just check one point from our solution. So let's check zero down here. That's a nice easy point to check. So negative a half. So I get negative a half times negative three times negative one is less than zero. So I've got negative three halves is less than zero, which is true. Um, obviously, this isn't a perfect check. You know, there's infinite points that we would have to check, but it's a good start. It's a good thing to look at and go, yeah, we probably did this right. Okay, so here are all the values of x that will make this inequality true. That's the solution.